Well, we have a really special surprise for you. I am here with Laura Rudisil, the Director of Marketing and Communications at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art for a very, very special exhibit, Flowers in Bloom. Can you yes. give us just a brief description? Yeah, absolutely. So Art in Bloom is our spring fundraiser. And what it is, is we partner up with local floral designers who create their own floral interpretation and masterpiece based off of exhibitions or actual pieces of art in our permanent Wonderful. collection. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. And, but this one right here is a traveling exhibition, you it tell is. me? It is. So it opened in November um, and it closes at the end of this month, so April 28th. So if you okay. haven't had a chance to yes. see it, you absolutely must see it. It's Preston Singletary, Raven in the Box of Daylight. Um, it is a glass um, exhibition that is fully immersive. There are sound, video projections, along oh, wow. with seeing this beautiful glass. And what it is, it's actually telling a story. Uh, we follow Raven, a trickster character central to creation stories, and he's talking about like his journey and stealing the, and releasing the sun, moon, and stars. And it's actually uh, more of a uh, Native American history. It's very rich in that culture. Um, it's the Clinket people that are in the southeast, or yeah, southeast Alaska. Okay. Well, this is very, very important to uh, you know the state of Oklahoma, which yes. is very, very immersed in Native American culture of all of absolutely, all kinds. Absolutely, absolutely. So what we're going to do is just a little tease here. We're just going to take a brief walk through to get the entire immersive experience. It's very sensual. Yes. Um, then yes. you definitely want to come and visit the Museum of Art, Oklahoma City Museum of Art, before it travels on at the absolutely. end of April. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And the other great thing too is that um, the the glass really does pair nicely with our iconic permanent collection yes. from Dale Chihuly. So it just, and uh, Preston was part of the Pilchuck School of Glass, which is where uh, Dale has set that up. And so there's just a lot of great connections and, and pairing yeah. and matching between yeah. our institution and this. Lots of lots and lots of layers. So yeah. let's go through the exhibit and then we'll come back and see whatever the floral rendition yes. of this beautiful work of artistry. Yes. Um, proves to be. Okay, so let's do it. And so this would be floral depiction number yes. one, and everyone can vote. Yes, we do have a People's Choice Award. Okay. Um, and I believe even our CEO and president, uh, Dr. Michael Anderson, will even vote on his favorite okay. too. So we've got a couple fun different options um, okay. to really help 
highlight the florists and all the creations and beautiful interpretations that they okay. have. And, and they're all local florists? Yes. Okay, and yes. this one is? This one is um, the wine glass floral and design. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well now let's move on to number two. Now this beautiful glass exhibit also closes at the end of April, so yes. describe a little bit what uh, viewers and visitors will see here. Yeah, um, so when you exit to Preston Singletary, uh, you will come into a smaller gallery that has glass from our okay. permanent collection, um, and there are artists that have either have some association with the Pilchuck uh, Glass School or Dale Chihuly or, or Preston. Okay. Um, so we, this is something that we felt that would kind of just be a nice, uh, you know, extension after yeah. Preston mm -hmm. uh, to come and see some of our pieces that sometimes we don't yeah, always get this to have. Is, yeah, this is incredible, and I've been here many times, and a lot of these are new and fresh to yes. me. Um, so, Stuart, let's just do kind of a slow pan of what's here. Maybe end up on that fabulous kimono. Oh, I know that is one of my favorite. Oh pieces. my goodness! Yes, uh, but this one is done by uh, local florist uh, Tractus and uh, it's, it's a name that probably a lot of people are familiar oh, yes. with. Uh, they are, are very well known in the community. In fact, actually besides this piece here in the gallery, they're the ones that any other like just floral arrangements just to keep, keep the museum feeling like it's in it, bloom. Uh -huh. uh, they also are the ones that do that and okay. they are the main florist for Bubbles and Bloom, which is our big cocktail event yes. tonight on the roof terrace. Wonderful. Well, we are very familiar with Troctus. We have shot there before. Some of you might remember it. Let's really focus in on this beautiful artwork. Floral yes. artwork inspired by fish bones. Fish bones, which you see the artwork directly behind it. Yes, so. that. Well, in fact, when we first came in, I uh, I thought this was part of the exhibition. So that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty spot on. It is spot on and very very fluid and beautiful, and I love the shadow play. Yes, yes, it's it's stunning. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Well, this is definitely the most romantic arrangement so far. Tell yeah. us a little bit about the flower arrangement, but also its inspiration. Yeah, so this is by uh, floral designer Jenny Roche, and she has taken inspiration from the entire gallery, um, which is the art of still life. And so you just see really beautiful pieces that are capturing, you know, everything from what you see on a tablescape, uh, you've got beautiful just arrangements, apples, fruit, mm -hmm. everything. And so um, it's just one of those that she's really played a lot on the textures and the fruit uh -huh. and the tablescape, yeah. I feel. As it, yeah, very, very depictive of almost a 1950s vibe. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it, it feels like to me, love the different still lifes within a larger still life. My favorite being the radish there on yes. that pink nap. Well, we'll work through this one quickly because yeah. this is very, very popular. So yes, tell us a popular. little bit about the exhibition and the floral yeah. inspiration. So this is our portrait gallery. And so as you see, there are tons of paintings and, and images of people from George Washington, even to our uh, lovely artist, Kehinde Wiley, which I feel is very much of a strong representation um, of oh, floral yes. arrangement to his piece to, I, I would assume, even just the actual flower in the painting. I mean, it's incredible. These yellow ranunculas, I mean, I, I just everything. The entire composition is so dramatic. It's It's got such movement yes. and such vitality yes. to it. And it's uh, done by our friends over at Curbside Flower, which we Wonderful. all know and love, and their yes. hearts and everything that they do. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously from like a homelessness and, and oh, everything. Yes. So uh, we appreciate them and their partnership. And they, in my opinion, always bring some of the most beautiful flowers. Oh, just, well, and just so original. Yes, and, and, it's striking. Yeah. It is striking. Like the, the height of this and the like, very, it's just very strong. Yes, I just, I, I love it. And it's very redemptive and ascendant. And yes. I love that too. Yes, yeah, this is fabulous. This is a showstopper. This is a showstopper. <laughs> um, and again, very popular. So we'll move on to the next one. 
Okay, now this will be exciting, not just yes. for me, but for you as well. Because Absolutely. I haven't seen this one either, but we are on the second floor. We are in our permanent collection gallery yes. still. Okay. It's picturing America, nature, and nostalgia. So okay. a lot of kind of landscapes, um, earthiness, uh, representing, I think, uh, America in kind of a wide range. Oh, and um, I can see, artwork. oh, these these really capture my soul. Yes. The, the yes, yes I've seen here. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, how stunning, how dramatic. Yes, how yes it has more kind of like gorgeous. a little mannequin um, of somebody. And this is done by Madeline's Flower Shop. I kind of, and, and you know, almost, um, yeah, almost uh, reminiscent of like Mother Earth mm -hmm. and every kind of floral expression and Absolutely. foliar expression. You have your neutral but pops of color, uh -huh. um, greenery, textures. Succulents. Mm -hmm. What are these? Those are palm fronds. Ah. And hydrangeas and proteus and succulents. And oh my, go oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Econops. Oh my word. Oh, yes. In terms of colors, textures. And Look at the feather headdress yeah. or feather chapeau, whatever. Yes. Yeah, so oh I my goodness. She took inspiration or she literally picked flowers and other sources from all across the country. The United States. Yeah. Wow. To represent, of course, picturing America. Yeah. Now this is Miss America right here. Absolutely, <laughs> and a wonderful uh, nod to you know everything that we have in Oklahoma and our tribal nations and and everything that we get to talk about. Well, and I think and the, and the, and the variety of ecosystems absolutely and different yes, kinds of yeah, terrain from south and east yes. Oklahoma to yes. you know, our plains out west. Yes, everything. Well, this is absolutely fabulous. It's going to be extremely difficult for you guys to pick which one is your favorite. And there are more yeah, that yes. we have not shown you. So you need to run, not walk to the <laughs> Oklahoma City Museum of Art this weekend. Yes. They will be up until? We will close Art and Bloom um, Sunday at 5, which is our normal day. Okay. Um, we have programs lectures, a whole wide variety of things to yeah. do, not just to see, of course, beautiful artwork mm -hmm. in our museum, but then of course the floral interpretations of those. Um, yeah. yeah, so we just really hope everybody comes out and sees yeah. it. Uh, we've got a lot of really great things. Well, it's just incredible, as is the museum and as are you as a tour guide. We really appreciate it. I definitely will be coming back to examine <laughs> things in closer yes. detail in a yes. microscopic way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little visit um, out and about here in Oklahoma City. I thought it would be fun today for this signature style Saturday to show you some of the signature plants in my garden that are blooming for the first time. So these are the things that I'll be recording. Oh, today is the first day that I noticed these plants in bloom. So number one, do you know what this is, Leah? I do not. This is a test. Okay, this is foxglove, Beautiful. aka digitalis of which the heart medicine is made. And yes, these are toxic, but here is, the spires are just starting to come up. Yes, there's one that's just starting to show color. And until they start to show color, I'm not sure what color they are going to be. I've got ivory ones. Here's an ivory oh, one here. Yeah, here's an ivory one here. Beautiful. Coming up. That is cool. Yes, isn't that wonderful? I mean, and isn't this wonderful? What's that? This is, uh, you asked me, and now of course I can't come up with the name. Okay, we had to cut there because I was, I was just having a senior moment and I couldn't come up with the name Euphorbia. 
uh, between euphorbia and eugenia and all of those I sometimes get confused Use. in my head <laughs> yes and this is beautiful euphorbia that started out as just a little baby that's speaking of my friend Carlina Elizabeth who came by this week she gifted me a start of this last year and coming up out of the profusion of these really gorgeous chartreuse blooms is another foxglove and this is kind of a pale pink like i say i don't i don't know there's more foxglove to come it's just now starting but i wanted to point out this floral first to you and as they continue to open up obviously on next week's walkabout i will i will definitely show that to you now behind leah over here these are my first larkspur Beautiful. aren't these gorgeous i know there's it's sometimes there's so much to to look at and by the way yeah, both of these are planted along lemon lane so i've got that blue and chartreuse color palette going here and these make great this is my alternative to delphinium when i was at bricks earlier in the month i told you about one thing i would not plant and that was delphinium well larkspur is kind of a version of that and this is the first in bloom here's another one right here and it can bloom in this kind of purpley blue white or pink but this is the color that typically i go for and it will bloom at varying heights depending on when it went to seed or when i sowed the seed some of it is a little bit lower you can see some of it in here and you can also see that i've got more bulbs that i pulled out from pots that i will be planting in here and as always i am weeding as i as i watch what's going on in my garden i need to deadhead all of those narcissa but i just i love the way look at look at how lush lemon lane is especially on this side on the south side and i'm working on this side making it a little bit more lush the plants that i installed on this side weren't quite as large as the plants that i installed on this side so it is so bright it's almost so bright we can we can hardly we can hardly look but i'm soaking up i'm soaking up all those really delicious delicious hormones okay first rose in general and specifically morning. on this it's a breeze rose bush and look how many are to come Aww. so i'm so excited about that it's huge this may be one of the most disease resistant roses ever it's probably the most disease resistant rose that i've planted and i love the fact that it just is I, I love the simplicity of it. I love the fact that it just doesn't look as if it requires high maintenance. It just kind of does its thing. And you can see this is the one I planted last year. And then this is the one I planted much later in the season. Now you can see it still has tons of blood, of blood tons of blooms <laughs> and buds on it, but it will take a little bit longer to mature to the size of the one on the west side. So that is, that is a first for that. And now I am starting to see the first buds about to open up on the allium. And I've got so allium. Excited. Aren't those gonna be fun, Leah? I've got those in different locations all around the garden. There's some on this side and there's some on that side. So these are just, these are fun firsts for me and I like documenting them. You can see lots of the larkspur over here. And yes, when larkspur goes to seed, it can go to seed a little too vigorously and I just edit out what I don't want. So you keep what you want and you edit out the rest. And lastly, I'll show you a first that's about to come into bloom, but not quite yet. But my eyes were closed, it's so bright. <laughs> it's so bright. Okay, look at this Minoan lace. And look how thickly it's planted through here and think how gorgeous that's going to be. Use your imagination to think how gorgeous that's going to be when all of that white is blooming behind all of everybody's favorite, apparently, East Friesland. So I went to Bricks yesterday and I was talking to Jen and she said, she said, oh yes, we had a rush 
on East yeah. Friesland, <laughs> Salvia, cool. after you did your video. So obviously, um, it's virtues. It's well, virtues commended. It and the bees absolutely love it. And I am loving how beautiful it is out here in the garden. But as beautiful as it is, there are some things I want to show you on the inside. So let's take a break and then we'll go into the parlor. Come on in, Stuart. And all of you, welcome to the parlor on the Cottage on the Hill. It's been a while since I have done anything inside and on this signature style Saturday, I thought I would just kind of give you a little walkthrough and point out some of the seasonal changes that I've made to kind of lighten up the mood in here a little bit. And my question of the day is, what seasonal changes have you guys made to your interior spaces or are about to make if it's still cold where you are. So for me, it's all about bringing in things that are evocative of, of coolness because pretty soon it's going to get very, very hot. So all of the things on the coat rack, all heavy coats, all felt hats, all kind of leather items, those have been replaced now with things that are straw in nature um and more appropriate for spring and summer and i think they're not only functional but i think they're decorative and i like that i love that kind of woven feel it's very serena and lily if you will a company that my daughter-in-law delphia is is kind of obsessed with um bringing the outdoors in there we go. Uh, turn the light on. I turn the light on. Okay. <laughs> Illuminata. Hello. <clears throat> I, I thought, what is Stuart doing over there? Sneaking over. Yeah, that's a little behind the scenes moment that you got to share with us. Um, some other things that I did. I replaced, or I didn't replace, I just switched around the large blue and white ceramic lamp that was here with these two brass ones, these two metallic ones that were on my bedside table and the ones that used to be on my bedside table that were kind of a stoneware pottery that had been wintering over in the basement. I brought those back up and next week I'll give you, I guess, maybe a little glimpse into what I have done to seasonalize my my bedroom and bath area. I like so the, the ball on top is big. Yeah, the finial, cool. yeah, the finial is nice. So I, I like the symmetry of this. You guys recognize this orchid. It is still going oh, strong. Wow. I mean it almost looks like it's fake, but it's still going strong. A couple of purchases that I made recently, and it's particularly appropriate that I show them to you today because we spent all morning shooting at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. It was so much fun. We got to see Art in Bloom, where local florists would take a point of inspiration from an exhibit or a work of art, and they would then render their inspiration in, in floral artistry, and it was absolutely beautiful. But what I wanted to say was if you're ever in Oklahoma City, you need to make sure to go to the museum gift shop because it's wonderful. It's where I got, and I have pointed it out to you before, my guest book. And boy, has it been busy. Oh, oh my goodness. My <laughs> guest book has been so busy recently. Oh, wow. There have been people from literally everywhere. I had some of my little friends. They drew some <laughs> pictures. So it's been busy, and I'm keeping that right here on the sideboard so I can access it easily when we have guests. I also got this really beautiful marble bowl, <clears throat> excuse me, in a brass stand, which kind of mimics the brass lamp, and I picked that up. It was on sale at my local museum store, so that was kind of fun. Some other things that I've done is basically I've just changed out, well, there. Let's. I'm having a tulip moment. Most of the tulips are done outside, but I can still get, I still had a few that I wanted to cut that still looked pretty good, so I brought those inside. And while they're still available in floral markets at Trader Joe's, whatever, then I have, I'm, I'm even buying some more tulips. So over here, uh, I've got, I love these because there I can, at my florist or whatever, I can buy different shapes and sizes of tulips that I grow in my own garden and they're fun and I love the dark interiors 
on oh, wow. the, on these. I know, aren't they fun? These kind of, I loved this color. And what's so interesting to me is that I was trying, we were all trying to decide, there were a bunch of us trying to pick out what, what color of tulip. And I saw this and I immediately went for it. And, and after I went for them, two other women standing there said, okay, I was having a really hard time <laughs> deciding what color to get. So I'm going to get the same color you got. So we all went home with these orange blossoms. I think they're absolutely beautiful. My topiaries are still going strong. I can kind of move them in and out as some of them need more sun because they really flourish in more sun and heat. Leah pointed out to me that these wonderful blue and white candlesticks that I got thrifted uh, Stuart, we might want to put that thrifting video if we remember to at put a end. link at the end. We'll put, try to put a link at the end. But she found them online, and I think they're wonderful. And they ha they used to be on my sideboard, and I've moved them over here on top of the mantle to accompany the topiary and to accompany, yes, I have to point out my boxed set of my books, which I'm, I'm so, so proud of. Another thing that I do is... Stuart will attest to this, Stuart and Leah will attest to this, is I, I kind of switch out my snacks seasonally that I have on hand, <laughs> that I have on hand for them. So now we're, we're kind of doing, you know, more ginger snaps and things like that. We're still, we've still got the almond windmill cookies in rotation. They're all good. They're all, they're all good. <laughs> uh, pretty soon shortbread will be showing up, but I, I, I kind of go from chocolate to more shortbread kind of things seasonally. And that's kind of what's going on in here. Let's see, are there any other changes? Oh, a big change in case I, I can't remember if I pointed this out to you guys or not, but I, I, kind of rearrange the furniture. So sure, this, away, yeah, this settee used to be over here and I have moved it so that it now faces the fireplace, which was my instinctual way that I wanted to arrange the furniture when we first moved in. Um, my friend John Terman suggested it be over here, but I really like the openness of this. And I love how beautiful it looks with this needlepoint tapestry over the edge, um, hanging over the edge to kind of protect it. And also the pillow that I made from a thrifted find at Goodwill. So just a few changes in here. Most of them are just, are just subtle, but to me, they make a big difference. Oh, something else. I switched out my velvet pillows for these plaid linen ones, which are lighter, of course. And I, let me see, anything else in here, Stuart? Um, all of my, look how pretty it looks out there. Look at that bright sunlight. Um, but all of my, my hat racks and things now, since I have moved out of cold weather, hat wear and headwear and headgear. Now all of them have my different collection and Hub's collection of different, you know, different straw hats and things. And let's take a break here and I'll think if there's anything else in here I wanted to show you. These are subtle changes, but subtle changes sometimes have really massive mental shifts in your mood and in the experiential joys you, you uh, have every day. So let's go into the kitchen after we take a little break. Well, some of you, I think, were concerned that because we've had so much garden content recently that we were doing away with Signature Style Saturday. And no, 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 it's just there's a lot of gardening content that we wanted to catch up on and, tis and the season, tis the season <laughs> and share with you. I posted a picture of these fabulous Morris Gudinov tulips, double tulips. They look like peonies on Instagram the other day, and the picture really blew up. These are the remains of what was blooming in my garden. The rest have already pretty much faded, but these are very late blooming. And next year, probably what I will do is plant these in the back because they are definitely 
ones I want to repeat. I got them from colorblends.com. So many different people asked me about them. And I think they look beautiful here in the banquette area. And speaking of the banquette, I switched out. I had some uh, velvet tapestry pillows in here that were a little bit heavier. And I switched them out for cotton pillows, linen pillows, pillows and things that are more evocative of spring and summer. Likewise, I switched out my rug from the one that was thicker and heavier and in more clay and rust tones for this one that you guys have seen before. It is in light blue kind of ivory and buff colors and it just kind of lightens up the mood, I think. I switched out a lampshade one that was darker to one that is lighter. And let's see, what else did I do? Um, oh, here is where this okay. lamp lives now. Stuart's gonna do a slow pan. I went, yeah, long, it, I went the long way. <laughs> really, um, it, it, it's kind of hard to get lost in the cottage though, because it's not that big. Um, but I switched out this lamp for the brass ones. This used to be on the sideboard and I put it here. And I have to tell you that at night, I absolutely love the shadows that this Monstera make on the hood of the range. It's absolutely beautiful. And I like this because it's got kind of a tropical feel. The topiary, the ivy topiary that was there that I had for years, it finally bit the dust. And I wanted something that was a little bit more dramatic and again, gave me more of a summertime vibe. And I think that's kind of fun. As I said, I've kind of switched out my treats. Now this, oh my goodness, look at these gorgeous eggs. These are absolutely they are just stunningly beautiful. No wonder Martha Stewart wanted to have a whole paint collection named after these kinds of eggs. These were a gift from my friend Carlina Elizabeth. She came by the other day, not only with gifted eggs, but also with some starts and things for me to put out in the garden. I love these little napkins. I think I have shown them to you before. These were a gift from my BFF, and they say Cottage on the Hill. And I think they're very, very dear. I, I like those. Um, what else? What other changes have I made here? Not a lot. I switched out my green glassware back to my blue glassware. And I had to replace my blue bottle because it had gotten kind of mucked up. So once this is consumed, this will be my iced tea bottle. And I have my canister for my... Uh, uh, water dispenser that I keep out pretty much all of the time on days that I'm working outside or that I have guests or whatever. That's pretty much filled with water because yes, I am trying to drink a lot more water and hydrate a little bit more effectively now that gardening season is here. So those are just subtle changes. They're not big. You're thinking, you know, some of you may be thinking, well, what's, what's the big, <laughs> what's the big, you know, hoopla about all of this? Nothing. It's just these are minor changes that I have made that I think you guys can make too that will enhance your quality of life. Just little, little things. So let's take a break here and we'll talk about what I'm reading, what I am wearing, and what I am watching. Well, I think I've said it about a million times that I am a girl who loves pockets and I love these britches because they have great pockets and they kind of make me feel and talk like Katherine Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> um, from top to bottom, here's my outfit du jour. My earrings I just bought online. I really like them. My neck scarf, I got this at Bishop's Lodge in Santa Fe and we're getting ready to take a little Mother's Day trip to Santa Fe. I'm going to be able to see some of my kiddos and my daughter-in-law there. I'm so excited. Um, my top is Banana Republic. My belt is, I don't know where I got this. I want to say Nordstrom Rack. Uh, my britches, as I told you, I think I've showed you these before. I bought online. I have them in several different colors. They are eminently cool in these hotter days. And my tennis shoes are also, I bought these online. I think I got these on Amazon. I love the fact that because they are woven, they've got kind of a kind of a Coco Chanel vibe. Um, let's see my bracelets. 
my, I haven't, I haven't worn bracelets in a while, probably because I've been gardening. I got this on line. This belonged to my second mother, this gold ring. This was a, one of my favorite Mother's Day gifts ever from Hubs. And this belonged to my mother-in-law. So there you go. There is my outfit du jour from top to bottom. Okay, what I am reading, starting with A Gift from Stuart, Be Here Now by Ram Dawes. I mean, it's got wonderful messaging and wonderful imagery. Look at that beautiful butterfly. He gave me a copy and he also gave one to Leah. If I get one, then Leah gets one. That's, that's the rule around here. Um, this is a cookbook that my kiddos had when I was at their home in Denver and my daughter-in-law, Taylor, is a brilliant cook and she made some recipes out of this book by Molly Boz, Baz, I'm not sure, cook this book. I like it because it's got good recipes even though I'm not cooking a ton these days but also because it's blue and the other thing I like about it is she can she can make the recipes first and then just tell me which ones are good and which ones are easy and then I've got them in my own book. So we will put a link to this below and thirdly i'm so excited about this because in june we are going to do a youtube live we hope if we can arrange our time zones and our schedules um, i'm going to be doing a youtube live with paula sutton you guys probably know her she is well, let's just say she is an inimitable stylista from Hill House Cottage. She's got a fabulous Instagram account. She wrote this book. I, I've read it before, but I'm reading it again in anticipation of my interview with her. And I highly recommend, if you have not already purchased it, that you do so. So that is what I am reading this week. What I am watching last week, I wrote about this um, in our most recent newsletter. I watched the documentary on Mary Tyler Moore. She had a lot more depth and a lot more complexity to her personality than you would think. I also watched a documentary on Gloria Vanderbilt and that was really fascinating and if you really want to see um, a kind of a sign of the times and different characters that move in and out then definitely you might want to watch that i've really been into memoirs and documentaries late lately particularly of women who are more of my vintage or before so that's been fun for me to do uh let's see what am i i already covered what i am wearing that is what am i forgetting there's my next <laughs> what what am i forgetting <laughs> was there some was there something else i was going to tell you i don't think so that pretty much wraps it up it wraps up what i am reading what i am watching what I am wearing and what I am talking about today <laughs> on this Signature Style Saturday. Thank you guys so much for hanging with me. We had an absolutely wonderful time and thank you for all of the people that made guest appearances and were kind of our tour guides through the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. So there you go. Have a wonderful Saturday. <laughs>